Hi there, YouTube friends. Welcome back to Auntie A's Kitchen. And as courgettes, as we call them in the UK, or otherwise known as zucchini in other parts of the world, are in season, I thought I'd share with you three simple recipes in today's video. In the first part of the video, we're going to make some delicious crispy zucchini fritters that are great to serve for a light lunch. Then in the second part of the video, we will make some wonderful zucchini soup and top it with some homemade chili oil and some garlic croutons. Then in the final part, we're going to make together some zucchini dip, which is packed with flavor and great to serve at a barbecue. So let's get started. Give your two zucchinis a wash and then trim off the ends and grate them. And a quick tip for you is to keep the stalk as this is going to give you something to hold on to as I show you in the video. This not only protects your fingers but allows you to use the maximum amount of zucchini. Next, season your zucchini generously with some salt and this is going to help to draw out some of the moisture and set this aside for about 10 minutes giving you some time to prepare one or two dips to serve your fritters with. There's lots of different ways to make dips and to be honest I usually just use up what's in my fridge. So for the base today we're going to be using some sour cream but yogurt also works very well. Season with some salt and pepper, then we will add some lemon zest as well as the juice from half a lemon. Give everything a good mix and have a taste, then finally we're going to add some chopped up garlic and some fresh dill. You can always use dry herbs, but whenever possible I'd always recommend to use fresh herbs as these really do elevate the flavours. Then have a final taste and if you're happy set this aside. Place your grated zucchini into a tea towel. I'm not sponsored to say this, but I think IKEA tea towels work really well for this. Then you're going to twist and squeeze out as much water as you can. And a quick extra tip is to set this excess zucchini juice aside because if your zucchini fritter is too dry later, you could always add a tablespoon of this juice to get the right consistency. Once you're happy that your zucchini is as dry as it can be, place it back into your clean bowl. Next add two sliced up spring onions and for some extra seasoning add some chopped up parsley as well as some oregano, salt and pepper. The final two dry ingredients to add is a teaspoon of baking powder and some flour. Then to bring everything together whisk up one egg and add this. This is a really flexible recipe so feel free to add extra vegetables, for example some grated carrots or other herbs. As I always say just have fun putting your own twist on this recipe. Once everything is mixed, you should have a wonderful sticky zucchini fritter mixture ready to cook. And if you feel that your mixture is too dry, you could always add a tablespoon of the juice that we squeezed out earlier. Then just place a large spoonful of this into a pan with a generous amount of oil. And as you put it into the pan, gently flatten and shape into your zucchini fritter. You should be able to fit about four zucchini fritters in your pan, leaving a little bit of space in between each of them. Let these cook for a couple of minutes before then gently flipping them over. May I jump in and say that if you like these three recipe ideas in one video, then you might be interested in my three sweet potato recipes video. Sweet potato soup, healthy sweet potato brownies and crispy sweet potato toast. Once all of your zucchini fritters have a golden colour, take them out of the pan and place them onto some kitchen towel to drain off any extra oil. And this is going to give you some space and a little time to cook up your second batch. Is all that's left to do is to plate up your delicious zucchini fritters that are easy to make as you've seen and I like to finish them with a garnish of parsley. And you'll see in the video I serve them with two different dips as I like the contrast in flavours, the sour cream dip and a spicy salsa and this recipe is already on the channel. So for our second recipe today we're going to make some heartwarming soup and for those who didn't know this about me this British girl absolutely loves a soup and a sandwich for a lunchtime and this flavour is on rotation in our house. It's not only healthy, but it's simple to make, so let's get back into this video. Start by roughly chopping up two carrots and two zucchini, one onion, and finally two potatoes that are going to help to thicken our soup. Finally, roughly cut up a couple of cloves of garlic, a handful of fresh parsley, then measure out your vegetable stock and put it in some warm water so that it has time to dissolve. You can always tell when the colder weather is approaching in our house as I start using my cast iron cookware more often as they're great for slow cooking stews, casseroles and pies. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing so that you don't miss out when I post some classic British winter recipes. Start by cooking your onions and as soon as they pick up a little bit of colour you can then add your garlic. Cook this for a couple of minutes until they become aromatic. Next add your hard vegetables. So for us today that's our carrots and potatoes. But as I've said, a lot of my recipes are flexible, so if you have some other vegetables, for example some turnips or some parsnips, then feel free to add some of these. I usually just add and use whatever is in my refrigerator. Don't forget to season with salt and pepper, then let your vegetables cook for about 5 minutes before adding your zucchini. As your zucchini starts to soften, add your vegetable stock into the pan and it should just about cover all of your zucchini. 
Bring this up to a boil, then place on the lid and let it simmer for about 25 to 30 minutes until the vegetables are soft, then take it off the heat and let it cool for about 5 minutes. Next, you can either place your soup into a blender or, as you can see in the video, use a hand blender to blend up your soup until you have the consistency that you'd like, then place this back onto the heat. Bring your soup back up to a gentle simmer and don't forget to have a taste so that you can decide what extra seasoning to add to finish up your soup. The last thing to do is to add a generous amount of your fresh parsley and I also add a little bit of oregano just to finish the soup off. For me personally, both the flavour and the consistency of the soup was perfect, but if you'd like it thicker, then just simmer a little longer. Or if you'd like it more runny, add some water, or you could even add some cream, which would also complement the taste and texture. You can finish your soup with any variety of toppings, but for today, I add a drizzle of some homemade hot chilli oil, some parsley, and then a few homemade croutons. You can find both of these recipes on the channel. Then as all that's left to do is to enjoy. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I absolutely love eating soups, so please drop me a comment below and let me know your top three soups that you like to make or eat. If you've never made or tried zucchini dip, then you're going to love this third and final recipe. Not only is zucchini dip great to serve as an appetizer with some vegetables, but it also works really well to serve as an extra dip at a barbecue. So you're going to start by washing and cutting off the stalk end of your zucchinis. Then slice them up into strips and place them onto your baking tray. Season with salt and oil liberally both sides of your zucchini before placing them into your preheated oven to roast which is going to bring a wonderful depth of flavour for about 15 to 20 minutes until they start to pick up some colour. Once out of the oven, allow your roasty zucchini to cool for about 5 minutes before then placing them into your blender. And may I quickly say that if you're new here and interested in having any of the recipes that you see in my videos, just to let you know, you can always find the full recipe measurements and instructions in the description below each video that I post. Next, add your tahini and two cloves of garlic, as well as the juice from half a lemon. Blend your zucchini dip until you have the consistency you like, then have a taste and season accordingly before then giving another mix. In the video, you're going to notice that I'm going to add some more salt and pepper as well as the juice from the other half of the lemon that we cut up. You will have noticed that in all three recipes that I've made today, I've included the peel of the zucchini. And this is because not only does it add a vibrant green colour to each of the recipes, but it's also healthy and full of lots of antioxidants. But if you don't like the more of a bitter taste that it brings, feel free to peel your zucchini before using them. The final ingredient to go into our zucchini dip is a few fresh basil leaves before blending one more time and then placing this into a storage container and then this is going to go into our refrigerator until I need to use it later. You can serve your zucchini dip straight away, but I think it has a much better flavour if you allow it to sit in your refrigerator for a couple of hours before you use it. When it comes to serving your zucchini dip, similar to baba ganoush or hummus, you're going to make a spiral well in the middle, then add whatever you want on top. Today I'm going to add some pomegranate seeds, which happen to be my favourite fruit that you may have picked up from other videos, as well as some toasted pine nuts, then a generous amount of some extra virgin olive oil. This zucchini dip is one of my favourite dips to serve friends and family, not only because it's quick to make, but it tastes amazing. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed these three zucchini or courgette recipes today, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. God bless.